I looked at my watch. It was 9.25 a.m. I looked around half asleep and saw only a few others in business class. I was next to the aisle. There's a man in the seat across the aisle looking out the window, and a Middle Eastern man sitting in front of him in the aisle seat. He was looking around a bit anxiously. I took a deep breath and laid back in my seat with a long trip ahead of me. I reminisced about growing up in Bloomington, Minnesota and getting my degree at St. John's, where I continued to play football. I remember meeting my wife, Dina, in California after being recruited by the medical supply company Thoratech. After being sent on a business trip to New York, I was so glad to be able to come home. Imagine opening our front door and seeing my beautiful wife and kids. Suddenly, I saw some people in front of me get up and start running towards the front of the plane. I heard a scream behind me and looked back just in time to see a knife be pulled out of someone in the aisle as a wielder ran to the cockpit. Oh my god, I shouted. Are you okay? I leaned down over him. He didn't answer, but instead let out a small groan as he looked at me. I just sat there in the aisle, frozen in astonishment. I peered to the front to see the pilot being pulled out of the cockpit. Hey! He shouted as he twisted and turned, fighting the two men yanking on him. After a moment, he gave up as they threw him to the floor. Everyone to the back of the plane! One of the men shouted in a thick accent. Shocked, I ain't moved right away, and presumably others didn't as he shouted louder. Now! I stood in the aisle and walked to the back of the plane as I saw everyone else doing the same. I looked back to see two young Middle Eastern men not far behind me following us. I heard them talking to each other and managed to pick something up about crashing the plane. When he reached the back, I took a seat, pulled out my phone, and called my wife. I looked around me and saw the man that was sitting across from me to my left and someone else in business class across the aisle. It didn't take her long to pick up. Hello? She asked, confused. These these men, they've taken over the plane, he stammered. What? What do you mean? I don't know. They just ran to the front of the plane and they, they stabbed a man. Oh, she cried out. Two passenger planes just hit the World Train Center a few minutes ago. I looked up and informed the people around me. The Twin Towers were just hit by two passenger planes. I put my phone back up to my ear. They were talking about crashing this plane. Oh my god, it's a suicide mission. A voice over the intercom began speaking. I gotta go. I love you. Wait. I hung up. I heard the man say, Here's the captain. Please sit down. Keep remaining seating. We have a bomb on board, so sit. I started breathing heavily as he began panicking. I leaned back and slowed my breathing. Where could they be flying to? Seeing the hijackers were staying back a bit, I had some space to speak freely. We need to do something, I said. What? The man next to me asked. They have a bomb. If we do anything, we'll die. I don't think they have a bomb. What would be the point if they're going to crash the plane anyway? I looked up to see a flight attendant running to the front of the plane. She opened the door and was quickly knocked down just as the two men in the back of the plane caught up with her. One of them started beating her. No more, no more, she said. No, 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 no. He continued to be here shouting, down, down, down. Sit down, shut up. I couldn't tell if she was dead or just passed out, but she was still. I could tell that the man flying in the aisle was dead. I turned to my left to see the guy in the baseball hat attempting to call someone. I decided to speak to my wife again. After a moment, she picked up. Are you okay? She immediately asked. Yeah, the man who was stabbed is dead. I think we have to do something. No, just sit still. I don't want you to get hurt. You used to be a flight attendant. What do you think the odds are they have a bomb? She didn't respond. I don't think they have a bomb. All I see is knives. Please don't do anything. They have weapons and you don't. If we do nothing, we're dead anyway. I have to do something. I ended the call. I thought about my options. Obviously just running up there won't work. They'll just kill me. There has to be something else I can do. Even if I can make it to the front of the plane, the door of the cockpit is closed now. I need to break it down. I looked around for a solution but came up empty. That's not going to be helpful if I can't get past them and guarding us. Definitely can't win a fight against both of them while they both have knives. It would be two against one. Unless I could get others to help. 
then we would have more than enough people to fight back. I start speaking to two men next to me. We need to rush them. I saw one of them holding their phone out. Are you kidding? Did you see what happened to the flight attendant? There has to be another way. We need more people, I explained. If we all attack them, they can't hold us back. Are you in? After a moment, they both agreed. We grouped up closer with the other passengers, gathering them for our plan. As we grouped up, I realized that if this is how I die, I want to speak to my wife one more time. I pulled out my phone and called her again. She picked up quickly. Hey, I said, trying not to worry her. What's happening? We're getting together and making a plan to take back the plane. Please, just sit down. If you sit down, everything will work itself out. If you try to do something, you will die. No. If I do nothing, we all die, as well as whoever the plane hits. If we're already dead, all we can do is stop others. Okay, she said, realizing she couldn't sway me. Don't worry, we're going to do something. I love you. I love you too, she said with despair. Bye, I hung up. I saw mostly everyone was huddled now. We have to do something, I announced. If we do nothing, thousands of people could die. Two planes that were already hijacked hit the World Trade Center, so it only makes sense that ours will hit something as well. There's no way we can get past them, a woman pointed out. Yes, there is, the man in the Yankees hat stated. If we all attack at once, we can take them out and get in the cockpit. An older man broke in. What makes you say that? They have weapons and we don't. There's only four of them and all of us. Even if they kill a couple of us, we can still stop them. I don't buy it, he responded. As long as we don't act, we have a chance to live. By fighting them, we're just killing ourselves. But we could save others, said the man that was next to me, still holding his phone. This is going to crash land. It just matters where. The older man and several others gave a skeptical look. We either need to all do it, or no one. There's no point in half of us going at them, because the rest will die anyway. I say we vote. Sounds good to me, said the woman who was arguing that we stay back. Raise your hand if you think we should rush the cockpit, I stated. I looked around to see many hands shoot up. I counted them, then said, raise your hand if you think we should stay back. It was clearly less, but I counted anyways. We'll take this plane back then, I declared. Wait, the young woman spoke, looking out the window. We're over a city right now. If we fall now, we'll hit other people. The man the baseball had replied, then we will prepare. Once the plane is out of the city, we'll strike. We sat down and began waiting. I stared out the window both impatiently and indifferently. It took a moment to appreciate the beauty. There were thousands of buildings below, and I could see them all. The entire city before my eyes. Eventually, the urban landscape began to fade into the suburbs, and I felt a tap on my shoulder. It's time, the man in the baseball cap said. I nodded and looked around to see everyone ready. People had random objects in their hands to fight, such as plates or butter knives. I saw a flight tent holding a big pot of boiling water. Let's go, I shouted. Let's take back this plane. We all charged at the two men in the aisle. The flight tent threw the water at the first one. He screamed and wailed his arms. She hit him on the head with a pot and he fell down. I launched myself at the second one and was greeted with a knife in my stomach. Other passengers started beating him as I attempted to pull myself away despite a throbbing pain in my gut. Someone came to my aid, but I said, I'm injured, to tell them to go on. The plane began turning and descending downwards. I entered the closest seat to get out of the way as the rest ran by, pushing the car with them. They reached the front of the plane and started bashing the car into the door. They all began chanting, In the cockpit! In the cockpit! I was pushing against the seat in front of me to stop myself from falling down the steep decline. I heard a series of crashes and dishes breaking until the door broke in. They all began jumping in as the plane flipped upside down. I fell to the top of the plane on my stomach. I was slipping along the top of the plane towards the cockpit. Everything went dark. 